And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zhi Kuan Zhan. Uh, I am from uh, I am PhD student from Zhejiang University, and now I'm a visiting student in Purdue University, supervised by Professor Ning Huili. Uh, it is my honor to be here to present you our latest work on marginal release and local differential privacy. Uh, this is a joint work with Tian Hao Wang and Professor Ning Huili from Purdue University, uh, uh, Professor Shi Bo He and Professor Ji Ming Chen from Zhejiang University. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will introduce the background and some preliminaries. Uh, nowadays, uh, many companies collect data from their users to, uh, do, to do analysis to develop some new technologies. However, this data will always contain some sensitive information about individuals. If their privacy is not well protected, uh, the uh, users will be reluctant to uh, contribute their data. Uh, the notion of local differential privacy is a promising way to uh, privately collect data from individuals and allow the aggregator to accurately uh, abstract some useful information. Uh, specifically, uh, each user can perturb their private data using a mechanism per se, and the aggregator can use the uh, perturbed data to um, abstract some useful information. And we call a uh, mechanism per size satisfies epsilon LDP. If for any input V1, V2 in domain D, their probabilities of outputting the same result is bounded by a parameter epsilon. And we call epsilon privacy budget. Normally, a larger epsilon will mean less privacy. Uh, frequency Oracle is the most basic task for LDP, and it is also a building block of more complex tasks. The goal of Frequency Oracle is to estimate the frequency of any value in domain D. For example, we want to estimate the age distribution of a city. And the basic assumption of Frequency Oracle is that each user has a single value x from a categorical domain D. Uh, random mice response uh, is a basic technique to implement uh, frequency oracle under LDP. And it is a survey technique for privately uh, question uh, developed in 1960s. Uh, for example, if we want to know the portion of people uh, that have some specific disease, uh, we can allow uh, each person to flip a secret coin if, uh, if head, uh, they answer truthfully, uh, and if tail, they answer randomly. Uh, the random response guarantees that even if the aggregator see the answer, it is not certain about the secret. For example, even if a patient will, uh, will also answer no with probability uh, 25%. Uh, after receive the random uh, answer from the users, the aggregator can use this uh, formula to uh, get the unbiased estimation of the number of patients. Uh, from the definition of LD, optional LDP, uh, random response achieves Lorentz 3 LDP. And uh, this is the basic random response, uh, and it can only handle binary uh, value. Uh, for categorical value, you can uh, refer to Tianhao's Rusnix paper, and this paper will provide a systematic comparison of different frequency oracle protocols. And these protocols are uh, most uh, based on the basic random response. Uh, and recently, uh, LDP has been deployed by many famous companies, such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Snap. Also, LDP is uh, uh, also studied in many well-known algorithms, such as heavy heat estimation, uh, frequent item set mining, uh, spatial data analysis, uh, social network data analysis, uh, machine learning model, and uh, recommendation system algorithm. And in, <coughs> and in this paper, uh, uh, we want to develop a marginal release protocol under LDP. And first, I want to introduce what is marginal table. Uh, given a data set with multiple attributes, 
a full contingency table will give the distribution of all attribute combinations. And the marginal table will give the distribution of part of the uh, attribute combinations. And it is easy to compute the marginal table from the full contingency table by summing up uh, the other attribute. And in this example, these two marginal tables have one attribute, and we call it one-way marginal. And similarly, we can call the full contingency table two-way marginals. And in the local setting, uh, each user uh, locally possesses several uh, private attributes. And they can uh, perturb their uh, private attributes locally before reporting them to the aggregator. Uh, and after receiving the uh, private attributes, the aggregator can calculate all the k-way marginal tables. Uh, when the number of attributes d is large, designing marginal release protocol under LDP is non-trivial. And next, I will introduce several existing marginal release protocols under LDP. And the most straightforward method is to first construct a full contingency table that satisfies LDP, and then post-processing uh, this uh, full contingency table to get all the marginal tables. However, um, the square error of this method is exponential proportional to d, and uh, d is the number of attributes. Uh, further, uh, the time complexity of this method is also exponential proportional to d, and makes uh, this method uh, hard to scale to larger d uh, setting. Uh, to mitigate noise, Another method is to construct all KV marginals directly. Uh, there are two alternatives to do this. Uh, one is to split the privacy budget, and then uh, each person uh, contributes information to all marginals. Uh, and another uh, method is to split the users, and each user will uh, contribute information to exactly one marginal. And in practice, we find that split users is much better than split uh, the privacy budget because um, report under the low privacy budget is very noisy. Uh, however, uh, this method should uh, split the users into D2K groups. And when D2K becomes large, the number of users contributing information to each marginal is small, and a small number of users is always vulnerable to noise. Uh, recently, Professor Komod uh, has uh, proposed to use the Fourier transformation to uh, do marginal release, and this uh, method is published in SIGMOD conference this year. Uh, this method is based on the observation that uh, the calculation of all k-way marginals uh, requires only a few coefficient on in the Fourier domain. Uh, in this example, uh, we want to uh, calculate uh, all one-way marginal requires only the first three uh, Fourier coefficient. And there are two drawbacks for this method. Uh, one is that it can only handle binary attribute. The other is that when k and d becomes large, uh, the number of uh, co uh, Fourier coefficients that requires to um, reconstruct all k with marginals will be uh, large. Uh, and thus, the number of users contribute information to each uh, Fourier coefficient is small. So I will introduce our proposed protocol CAM. Uh, uh, CAM is inspired by the preview protocol developed in the centralized setting. And it uh, consists of four steps. Uh, first, uh, the aggregator will strategically uh, choose a set of LV marginals and then broadcast them to all users. Uh, and second, each, each user choose one of the marginal to report, and the uh, aggregator can uh, construct a set of noisy marginals. Uh, third, 
uh, we want to ensure that all the noisy marginals to be consistent and non-negative. Uh, finally, uh, the aggregator can use the maximum entropy technique to reconstruct all the K-wave marginals. And the intuition behind our method is that instead of directly calculate all the K-wave marginals, we should only construct a few marginals uh, in advance and then use uh, the above marginals to reconstruct other unknown marginals by the maximum entropy optimization technique. Uh, to better understand step one uh, on how to choose uh, marginals, I want to uh, introduce step two, step three, and step four in advance, and then I'll introduce step one. Uh, so now we uh, suppose we have a set of um, uh, choose marginals, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, we can use the frequency oracle to construct a set of uh, noisy marginals. And uh, the calling of frequency oracle will inevitably make these marginals inconsistent and uh, negative. So we want to ensure that uh, this uh, marginals is consistent and uh, uh, non-negative. Uh, first, I want to uh, briefly introduce what is uh, inconsistency. For example, we have marginal M1 uh, that contains attribute A1 and A2, and marginal M2 contains attribute A1 and A3. And in this table, we observe that M1 and M2 have common attribute A1, but their projection on A1 is not the same. Uh, to make M1 and M2 consistent, uh, we want to first calculate the target distribution of A1. And uh, this can be calculated by the weighted average of the original distribution of A1. And then we can update the uh, inconsistent marginals by this formula. And uh, this table uh, gives the final result after the consistency. Uh, having a set of consistent LA marginals, we can reconstruct all KW marginals by the um, maximum entropy technique. Uh, this is borrowed from the preview protocol. And when the required KW marginal is fully covered by some consistent LA marginals, for example, uh, the required marginal has attribute A1, A2, and A3, and we have a consistent marginal that contains attribute A1, A2, A3, and A4. In this case, we can directly compute the required marginal from M by summing up A4. Otherwise, we can use the maximum entropy optimization to take advantage of all LV marginal that have common attribute. For example, uh, the required marginal has attribute A1, A2, and A3. And uh, there's uh, no consistent marginals that simultaneously contains A1, A2, and A3. But we have M1 contains A1 and A3. M2 contains A2 and A3. In this case, we can take advantage of the information from M1 and M2 by using the maximum entropy technique. And now I can introduce how to choose uh, a set of marginals. Uh, our goal is to determine uh, the marginal size L and the, marginal, uh, the number of marginal M to minimize the total error. Uh, in our setting, uh, there are three source, sources of error. Uh, that is noise error, sampling error, and reconstruction error. Uh, the noise error is introduced by the frequency oracle. And intuitively, larger L will lead to larger uh, noise error. And sampling error is due to the splitting of users. And intuitively, uh, when M is large, the number of users contributing information to each marginal is small. Uh, so that will lead to um, larger uh, sampling error. And uh, the reconstruction error comes from the maximum entropy step. 
uh, it is hard to derive the analytical expression for this error. Uh, but intuitively, larger L and M will okay, okay. We are lead to a smaller um, reconstruction error. Uh, because uh, this will capture more uh, correlation information among attributes. Our key idea is to choose L and M to ensure none of the three errors dominates the others. And finally, I will present our experimental results. Uh, we use the sign of squared error to measure the utility. Uh, and we use the method that always out output the uniform distribution to serve as our baseline. And we compare uh, our proposed protocol to the full contingency table method, all marginal method, and the Fourier transformation method. And these two figs show the SSE on binary dataset COSEREC. Uh, for the left fig, uh, the, the number of attribute D is 16, and uh, the marginal size K is 3. And the y axis, uh, the y axis is in log scale. And we observe that our proposed protocol uh, decreased the SSE by one to two orders of magnitude. And for the uh, right fig, uh, D is uh, 32 and K is 6. Uh, in this setting, um, the computation time of uh, FC method is too high and uh, the number of users contribu contribute information to the AM and FT method is too small. So in this setting, uh, it, it is hard to um, scale to that three method. Uh, however, our proposed CAM protocol can easily handle this setting and achieves pretty good performance. And this two fix show the SSE on a non-binary dataset US. And we can also uh, observe that uh, the proposed protocol decreased the SSE by one to two orders of magnitude. We also evaluate the performance of different methods for training SVM classifier. Specifically, we use the constructed marginal to synthesize the dataset and then use the synthesized dataset to um, train the SVM model. Uh, the performance is evaluated by the misclassification rate. And uh, we observe that um, the misclassification rate of the proposed protocol is close to the performance when there are no noise. And uh, other method is beaten by the naive method that always output the majority label. And here is the conclusion. Uh, we design a marginal release protocol under local differential privacy, and the proposed protocol is able to deal with the non-binary attribute, uh, decrease the sign of squared error uh, of uh, the state of art by one to two orders of magnitude, and achieves similar classification performance when there are no noise. Thank you. Hi. Uh, in your graphs for the COSARC dataset, can you quickly go back to those graphs, the experimental graphs? Okay. Um, I think you show the square error to be less than one, right? So that is, yes. are you normalizing over a certain thing? And if you're uh, like, if you're normalizing, so zero point one squared is less than 0 0.1. So how's, what's the impact on that on these results? I'm not sure. Uh, yes, this is uh, the no normalized uh, um, uh, and, uh, uh, sign of squared error. Uh, uh, the, actually, uh, the output uh, marginal table is uh, a, a vector uh, that output the uh, distrib distribution of different uh, uh, cell. And uh, all the, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the sign of the cell is uh, one. So uh, we have. Oh, this okay. Thing. So the sound. Okay, I see. Okay. 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 
Uh, okay, so I have a question about the parameter setting that page. So in that page, you claimed uh, you claimed that uh, you don't want uh, parameter setting. Right? Uh, parameter setting. So you claim you claim that you don't want any. Uh, you have three uh, aspects of uh, noise, right? So you uh, don't want. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so you don't want yeah. uh, uh, three errors dominates the others. I don't. Uh, can you explain this point? So uh, yes. what do you mean by dominate? Uh, yes. Um, uh, um, because we want to choose L and M, and uh, uh, if we want to uh, minimize the reconstruction error, we want to choose uh, L and M uh, uh, as large as possible. And uh, if we choose larger L, it will cause the noise error to be large. And we choose M uh, to be large, and it will cause the sampling error to be large. So we we want to choose uh, some um, uh, mi uh, middle L and M to uh, let uh, to balance all the three uh, noise er uh, the three error. Yeah, but uh, based on my understanding, uh, depends on different features of the to of the whole database, right? Or the data set. There will be an optimized setting of these uh, parameters, right? Because uh, yes, it based on different setting. Uh, uh, not not setting the, the, you, you the features the of the data set. data set. Yeah, because you have different L, different M, and N for different data sets, right? The, the, these parameters might could be uh, yes, may, maybe the different data set may uh, affect the reconstruction error. Let me, let me answer the question. <laughs> Uh, so the first uh, two errors are uh, depending on the general parameter, like how many number of records. It doesn't depend on the distribution of the data set. So reconstruction error depends on the data set. So we can only add, come up with estimation. So you can view the optimization goal as uh, optimizing roughly their sum. So you sum of three errors. But but the total error is not really the three of them summed together. So in practice, what we do is to make sure we choose a parameter so that none of the three is significantly larger than the other. Because because if it's significantly larger, that you can tune the parameter to reduce this. The other one will increase, but the overall effect will be better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's thank you for joining more time.